שלא מחברים. אבל אני יודע, אין שלום בישראל עכשיו. אבל אני יודע למה זה. I say peace to my brethren in Israel, but yet I realize there is no peace in Israel. And I do know why there is no peace in Israel. And it is because we have forsaken the commandments of God, the commandments that Moshe gave to us as a people and as a nation. <clears throat> and we have failed to observe God's commandment. I want to take you back to the, 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 the words of, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the prophet Moses in the book of Numbers in chapter 15. We go to verse Lamed Zayin. A little bit I will read to you in Hebrew and then the rest I will go, I will go back and go into English and read all of the passage that I'm going to state here. In verse 37, the Adonai el Moshe le'amor, debel el b'nei Yisrael ve'amata elachem, ve'ashu lahem tzitzit al kanapeh begadim le'dor tam. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them throughout their generation fringes in the corner of their garments. This is what I read in English, excuse me, in Hebrew, and now I want to continue on in English. And that they put with the fringe of each corner a thread of blue, which I see more and more now in Israel. At one time we did not because of not having the right creature that makes this color, but now we see often because we have found this color. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that you go not about after your own heart and your own eyes after which you used to go astray. That you remember and do all commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt To be your God, I am the Lord your God. Ani Adonai Elachem Asha Hutzit Etchem Meeretz Metzrim Lahayot Elachem Elo Elo La Elohim Ani Adonai Eloch Elohim. We wonder why. Why is Israel in the turmoil? Why are the rabbis, the men of Israel, being murdered by terrorists, by Muslims that do not have any desire nor care for God nor his word nor for the covenant that God made with Israel? And worse yet, They are funded and directed by the nations, by the Vatican, who also directs the nations, the European Union, the United States. Our leaders in Israel have gone unto the Vatican, and it seems to be, as Shimon Perez says, the only one that can bring peace to the Middle East is Pope Francis. What a lie out of hell. The only one that will bring peace to the Middle East is Moshiach. And the very Moshiach, the very one that God called to end this problem that we have, also said that he would send two anointed ones. And one's place in the scripture in Obadiah, Obadiah refers to that this as well. When Obadiah says in verse 21 and saviors or deliverers in this case shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. 
We don't even know how to say God's divine name. We don't even know how to praise God. Why? Because we have allowed every abomination that is under the sun to be allowed to be in Jerusalem. You cannot go to the Temple Mount and pray. Why? Because you do not keep the commandments of Almighty God. God said to David, destroy these enemies. He said to Joshua the same, take and kill everyone, both young and old, men and women, and spare, let your eyes spare not. But the enemy came in even with Joshua's men and subtly deceived Israel. And Israel made a covenant because Israel made a covenant before God. They would not break that covenant and allow the nations to dwell among our own people in our own land. And again, Israel has done the same. You have made a covenant with the Vatican. When Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, who was anointed to be king over Israel, but cannot deliver the children of Israel from all the violence, you go to the Pope of Rome Take him a silver menorah trying to buy mercy. It is God that shows mercy, not the Pope of Rome. You know, I will share this video with rabbis that I know. Rabbi Singer, Rabbi Winston. Speak unto our own brethren and tell them that we have failed God. We have failed to keep the commandments of God. We have failed God in every way possible. And we should rent our garments. And we should take and pray in sackcloth and in ashes before God. That he may have mercy upon our people. This is why we are being slaughtered in the streets. Because of the high places. Where is Josiah? He was willing to tear down all of the altars. That are unto Baal. Instead, we allow them to be erected. Even the Dome of the Rock was not built for Muslims. It was built for Jews. It's not the temple, though. But they, you've allowed the Arabic people to take it over. You know, God will have to come himself and deliver us because we have not the ability, yet we adorn, we adorn the tzitzit on our garments and we walk through the streets, tzitzit, all the way down to the knees. And even lower, as if we're somebody. And yet we will not even keep the commandment of God. God knew that our enemy would do this to us. And yet we do not even acknowledge him the way we should. We do not even acknowledge the evils that are going on. I remind you of Micah. In that day saith the Lord, chapter 4, verse 6, will I assemble her that halteth and I will gather her that is driven out and her that I have afflicted. Why were we driven out to begin with? We were driven out because we were, our forefathers made a covenant with Rome. And yet we do the same thing again. We're making a covenant with Rome in peace with the nations. And they drive us back further and further. Oh, there will be a remnant in Jerusalem when Mashiach comes. But you will be driven out. You will be driven out of East Jerusalem. And Shimon Perez, the son of Ahab, that has made an alliance with the Vatican, will give the Palestinians East Jerusalem as their capital, and they will take the Temple Mount. There should not be a single Arab allowed in the land unless they come into the covenant of Israel. That was the law of Moses. If the strangers among you come in to the covenant of Israel, then you can dwell at peace. But they're not coming into the covenant of Israel. You're taking and bringing the laws of the nations in. You know, there are true Christian people in the world that do stand with us. And what's ironic about it, those that are true Christians also embrace, embrace the covenant that God made with Israel. They do not claim to be a replacement of Israel. They embrace the covenant of Israel because they have been grafted in. 
Let me read on. And I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forevermore. So we have a covenant. We have returned to our homeland and God will reign with us. But yet we wonder why there is so much death and why there's so much destruction. When God gave us a covenant that he would return us to the homeland, we must keep his word. Not the word of the nations. And thou, o tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the king, the first, uh, excuse me, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? We are crying aloud. Why? Because of the murders and deaths in our people. Is there no king in thee? The anointed Benjamin Netanyahu was anointed to be king over Israel and yet he cannot even do the job. We wanted a king when we went to Samuel the prophet, our forefathers, and said, we want a king and be like the rest of the world and lead our people out to battle. What did it bring us? What has it brought us? Like it did before. Destruction. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, who have been anointed to be a king over Israel, why have you allowed this? No doubt you wring your hands out in your secret place when you're there alone and you even pray no doubt to God and ask him, why is this all happening when we've been brought back to the homeland? It's because you don't take a stand for God. God has to bring deliverers into Israel in order to deliver us from the hand of the enemies of Israel. And the prophet goes on in Micah. And he says, Is thy counselor perished? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Sure, our counselor perished. The first time the Romans had control, we handed him over to the Romans to be killed. Be in pain and labor to bring forth O daughter of Zion like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. That's right. We won't be allowed to stay in Jerusalem because of the covenant that our backslidden kings are making. Because not only the king is backslidden, but we as a people are backslidden and are not keeping the commandments of God. And thou shalt go even to Babylon, there shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. You go to Rome to seek deliverance. You go to Rome is Babylon. The Babylonian kingdom 2,000 years ago were the Romans and they were over both east and western legs of this Byzantine empire. And it was Rome. Obadiah clearly, read the book of Obadiah, he clearly identifies Esau's descendants as being the Romans. Now also many nations are gathered against thee. Do you not see the prophecy? Do you not realize the whole world has turned against us? And let me say this to the nations, to the European Union, to the United States, to every nation on this earth. You watch the Palestinians murder innocent civilians. And then you sanction them to be a nation among the Jews. You know, I was with a Palestinian man recently in Jerusalem. And I asked him, what was it like when you were a young man? He said, there was actually peace between us and the Jews. He said, then something changed. Then we had a first intifada and then a second intifada. And then something changed. You know, God has allowed these things to come upon our people because we have not turned our whole heart unto God. Sadly to say, every time evil comes upon us, it's because we have not put our heart fully to God to keep his word. So many nations are gathered against thee and say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. 
Mount Zion. Just like I've seen in a dream recently. I was laying prostrate on Mount Zion, praying unto God. When before me, a stone that laid in front of my face. And God, with the amber fire of his own finger, wrote out on the stone, my holy mountain is being defiled. And there is a man drinking on my holy mountain, and you are to remove him from my holy mountain. And you have allowed the Pope of Rome to do his communion, his, his mass, to drink his wine on the holy mountain of God on Mount Zion. And you've allowed him to defile the mountain of God. And it says here, let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand their, they his counsel for he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. It is time that we don't only turn to God and to prayer. It is time that we take action. You're the only ones. We need to take action and pray before the Lord and seek God for deliverance. You voted in the prime minister you have. If he will not be willing to keep the commandments of God, then find one that will. And then perhaps then the God of Israel will look upon our affliction and he will remember his covenant to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. To Abraham, to Yitzhak, to Yaakov. And he will send deliverance. As he promised by the prophet Obadiah and to Zechariah. I am Katriel Binun. Stephen Ben Dinun is, I am known in English. God have mercy. Yes,